says that money can't buy you love, but what role does money have to play when you are in love? Match.com's Relationship Insider, Kimberly Moffat, has developed a list of five love and money topics that everyone should take into consideration when dating, and she is here to share them with us this morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. When should you have that really uncomfortable <laughs> discussion about money and disclose where you are financially and your views on finances and money? Sure. Well, um, <laughs> it could be really awkward to ask somebody for their credit score on the first date. <laughs> you don't need to talk about credit scores, mortgages, anything of the sort on the first or second date, or even if it's a summer fling. But when finances become really important, financial compatibility especially, is when you start to think of that person as somebody who has long-term potential. Are you considering you know, a long-term relationship with them, moving in together, possibly getting married, having a baby? Because these things um, make it really important to have financial compatibility. Um, this is when most couples begin to fight and have a lot of disagreements. So most Canadians, according to the Match.com study, said that they would want to have that talk between six months and a year. Six months and a year. Okay, so you've got some tips for dealing with finance. And, and one subject that, subject that you touch on is debt. Yes. Can that be a deal breaker? I mean, if you find out that someone owes a ton of money on their credit card, could that be a, a, a total turnoff and end the relationship? Yes, it can be, according to Canadians. So 47% of Canadians have said that they would not want to date somebody who's in debt. Now, my personal opinion on this is that, and, and from my practice, KMA Therapy that's in Toronto, we have 10 therapists, and we've learned that most of these Canadians in that 47% will end up with somebody who is in debt. Uh, because the reason is, Canadians just aren't having these financial conversations early enough in their relationship to determine whether they're financially compatible. So, um, by the time they have the financial talk, they're already invested in that person, mm -hmm. and it's too late. It's too little too late. What are some of the red flags people should look out for? Um, well, there are obvious red flags that someone could be in debt. So, um, you know, credit cards are being declined. They have debt collectors calling their house. Oh, gosh. Um, maybe the repo man shows up at the door. But, I mean, these are obvious signs. But I think the main way that you should determine whether somebody is financially responsible is you look at the, the job and the income you know they have, and you compare that to the lifestyle that they have. Um, so if somebody is making, you know they're in a job that's making minimum wage, but they're driving to that job in a Lamborghini, there's a disconnect and you need to start asking those questions. So you talk about financial compatibility, but I'm wondering, can opposites ever attract? Can a, can a spender and a saver end up together and they can maybe balance each other out? Yes, they can, but they need to work hard at it. So most Canadians make the mistake of believing that if they're compatible in their relationship, that they're also going to be compatible when it comes to money. And that is actually a complete misconception. Uh, what we find in the psychology field is that, you know, Canadians, they, they think they are compatible, but they're really not. And, um, you know, what spending behaviors, um, you know, couples can actually get to the same goals very easily. It's very easy to make promises in that way. But when it comes to spending behaviors, uh, that's a completely different story. So you might have, you know, two people that really want to save for retirement. Of course, save for a boat, save for a great life together. Uh, but one person could be diligently saving and the other person could be spending them into debt. Kimberly Moffat, thank you so much. Thank you.